everyone. Patty Stern, one of the organizers of this event, uh, kept asking me, are you nervous? Are you nervous? Are you nervous? And I'm just thinking, this event is honoring Jersey City and Jersey City leaders. I'm a Jersey Cityan. I'm among a number of Jersey Cityans. It's like family. Why would I be nervous about anything being up here? Right? I'm so happy to be with you here tonight. Welcome to the inaugural Jersey City Leadership Awards presented by the NJCU Foundation. Tonight is a celebration. We celebrate that bettering the quality of life for those who live, work, play, and study in Jersey City is a noble pursuit. We celebrate the people who ensure Jersey City continues to soar both economically and culturally. We celebrate the continued dedication of New Jersey City University to enrich the caliber of education, educational opportunities for our next generation to excel in their chosen profession and to be successful. And finally, we celebrate how the past, the present, and the future create a perfect synergy to respect our past revel in our present, and discover just how wonderful, wonderful the future looks for Jersey City. This evening's honorees have made exemplary contributions to the Jersey City through their business or community endeavors, and they are indeed the impact makers who have affected positive change in Jersey City. I grew up in Jersey City and have wonderful memories about the city. With mixed emotion, I've watched as our city continues to boom with new business, real estate development, and cultural growth. One thing I love about my hometown of Jersey City is how we're able to blend the sense of being a small community with a rich history that's also hip and urban. New Jersey City University lives in the heart of our city as well. My earliest memory of what college life at NJCU is like happened when I was about 12 years old. Some of our older friends in the community were just students at the university and invited us to the dorms to hang out and experience uh, the college life. And I noticed most was that their energy and their happiness about being in school and pursuing their future really inf infected me. I knew I wanted that for myself too and felt that from that moment a college education was attainable. I'm proud that we are able to provide our citizens with excellent educational opportunity right here in the center of Jersey City and at New Jersey City University. The high caliber of education provided is vital to ensuring our emerging generations are successful in a competitive world we live in today. We've been able to experience tremendous, tremendous growth in Jersey City without ever losing the heart of what makes our city so special, and that's our people. This evening, you'll have the chance to hear about these extraordinary people who are our impact makers. To start off our program, 
It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Sue Henderson, president of New Jersey City University. Since August 2012, Dr. Henderson has served as the 12th president at NJCU. She is the first woman to hold the executive leadership position at the university in the 90-year history of the institution. During her tenure at the university, she has accomplished a range of transformational initiatives, including the creation of the NJCU School of Business and its relocation to the state-of-the-art facility in Jersey City's financial district, the implementation of a $350 million West Campus plan, and globalization of the curriculum that includes dramatic expansion of the study abroad opportunities, all while ensuring that NJCU tuition and fees have remained affordable and among the lowest in New Jersey while academic excellence and student success has continued to rise. I would like to welcome Dr. Hamilton. Thank you so much. It's uh, an absolute distinct pleasure. I'm going to share a short story with you. I had the privilege today of eating lunch with Pete Hernandez, who is our vice chair of our foundation, and a remarkable human being that has worked for Wyndham and has done so much for our students in helping them to understand how to be mentored and then, not for nothing, giving them a job because they are qualified and the best people for the job. Um, we talked about the fact that as an institution, you want to be an anchor in your community. Well, you can't be an anchor in your community unless you're connected your, to your community. So as I look around the room, the thing that pleases me most and makes me so excited is each and every one of you has made a difference in my own personal life, but more importantly, in the life of my institution, because you have impacted our students our faculty, our staff, our facilities in ways that you probably can't imagine. And because of that, we can give back to this wonderful city, this wonderful region, and become the anchor institution that, that you deserve. Um, an anchor institution is one that is, and listen carefully because I, this is what we're striving for, is an institution that is tied deeply into the growth, the economic development, the innovation, and bringing the organization, the whole city, along and helping it to be what it deserves to be. So whether it's our business program, whether it's our arts, whether it's the facilities that we're constructing on the West Campus that'll provide for the city, finally, a wonderful performing arts center, or whether it's the work that we're doing in the schools or in our social services agencies, all of these are things that make the city better, but we cannot do it without you as our partners. So I want to thank you and have you give yourself a hand of applause for that, for helping us. So you heard that this event tonight is about the past, the present, and the future. If you didn't have people like Tom Satton starting this out, if you didn't have people like Genova Burns, helping us make sure we're doing the right thing on the West Campus. And if you didn't have people like Steve Fulop, making sure that we have the assistance that we need to grow as an institution on the West Campus so that we can revitalize that part of the city in a way that wins not only for Jersey City, but it wins for New Jersey City University. Uh, whether it's the Lowe's or whether it's the Art Museum, all those things are important to making the city better. Or Stefania. I want, to know, I want you to know that if you don't have art in your life, you're not full. And this is the piece that I'm most excited about because I think it is the piece that's going to make this city what it deserves to be. It's a place. It's a place to be. And you have to have arts in order for that to happen. And an example of that, something you're going to listen to tonight, we'll have uh, NJ Pack, our symphony orchestra from New Jersey coming, but you also hope we'll get to hear our students. Just, there's art everywhere, and I hope it's something all, all of us take advantage of in a way that enriches our lives. So now I'm going to go to script. Thank you. So good evening, and welcome to this, our inaugural New Jersey City Leadership Awards. It is a wonderful event. It's presented by our foundation. It is designed to celebrate those who have profoundly impacted the quality of life in Jersey City. 
our very first class of honorees, and take my advice on this one, we had to think long and hard, who's gonna be our first? Mayor, Mayor C. Fulop, Angelo Genova, Stefania Panapinto, and Tom Stanton possess the collective portfolio of accomplishments as rich and diverse as our great city, past, present, and future. These are impact makers. Through their passion, their talent, their drive, they have made incredible contributions to Jersey City that have benefited the city and have benefited us all. And they will surely benefit the city and its residents for decades to come. I want to thank you all, as I said earlier, for coming tonight and celebrating these dynamic leaders. And I want to thank you all as partners, partners in helping to make this city better and making a difference in the lives of our students. Thank you. We are honored to have the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra with us this evening. For our first performance tonight, please welcome New Jersey City University student soprano Jenna Ravenda, who will sing Puccini's O Mio Babino Caro, accompanied by the NJSO Chamber Players. Earlier I mentioned the past, the present, and the future. This evening's honorees are shining examples of community and business leaders. Leaders who are rooted in the fundamental premise that bettering the life for those who live, work, play, and study in Jersey City matters most. Each have contributed selfless, selflessly for the good of the whole and with an unparalleled leadership vision that has positively impacted the city they love, Jersey City. For such a prestigious group of individuals, it was only fitting for us to create a prestigious, one-of-a-kind award. Something that's truly a piece of art. The Foundation commissioned Sue Works. Jersey City is a vibrant mural art scene. Sue Works is an artist who has his roots in Jersey City. He's a street artist, an illustrator, and a graphic designer. Since this is the inaugural year for the Leadership Awards, we wanted a unique award for each honoree. Something different from the average award people are used to receiving. Something with significance to Jersey City. Something people could connect to, the t connect to that tied elements of tonight together. We were connected to Sue Works, who has strong ties to Jersey City. He's an artist we believe could truly capture the artistic essence we were going for. Lucky for us, Sue accepted enthusiastically and agreed to design the awards based on a mural he was earlier commissioned to create by the mayor of Jersey City. 
Sue, please join me on the stage and let's show the audience your gorgeous award piece. Certainly a stunning rendition of, this, of the mural. These are just gorgeous and our honorees will proudly display their awards, we hope, when we visit you at your offices, we wanna make sure they're up somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure many of you have seen the Indian and the Train mural on Grand Street in Jersey City. I had an opportunity earlier to speak with Sue about the significance of his mural. He shared with me that because the mural was under a train trestle, that it got him thinking about who built the railroad. It turns out that the American Indians played a significant role in its construction. We acknowledge their significant contribution while the train represents how the railroad moved through Jersey City into the future. Sue, thank you for this incredible creative work and for being with us tonight. Thank you. In order for us to fully appreciate where we are presently and to plan well for the future, it is essential to remember from whence we came to remember the people who believe Jersey City would be something bigger and then vigorously pursue that vision. Our first award this evening is the Legacy Award. This year's award celebrates the history of Jersey City in honor of a gentleman who lived with the belief that ambition and education are two defining traits of being a great leader. The New Jersey City University Foundation was founded in 1971 and our first honoree, whom we are recognizing posthumously for his contributions, Mr. Thomas J. Stanton Jr. was the individual who founded the foundation. To present this award, please join me in welcoming Jonathan Pouchel, Vice President, J.P. Morgan Private Bank. Good evening. <clears throat> Over the years, Thomas J. Stanton Jr. impacted Jersey City through his leadership in the New Jersey City University Foundation and his involvement in the Jersey City business community. He steadfastly contributed his time, ideas, convictions, business connections, and business guidance with a whole lot of heart to ultimately ensure Jersey City became the thriving hub of commerce, culture, and community that it is today. What Thomas J. Stanton Jr. valued most was his family. And we are delighted to have his son, Tom Stanton III, with us tonight to accept this award on behalf of his father. Tom, please join me here on the stage. To accept the Thanks very much. Uh, as, I, as I look out, I, there's, you know, there's a percentage of people here who remember my dad, um, and I very much appreciate your coming. Um, it's, it's terrific that he is remembered with this award. Um, thank you to the foundation, and Sue Henderson, great things that are going on. Uh, ultimately, this is about the kids. My sister Louise, is an associate professor and the new director of the honors program at NJCU. So we thought we, so we would like her to deliver the family's remarks. Thanks very much. Dad would be thrilled to be the NJCU Legacy Honoree this year. NJCU is an institution whose values and practices mirror his personal ones and those of the bank that he led for many years. This honor this year is extra special for us because we are marking 20 years since his passing in 1998. 
Dad would see an institution that is a member of the community and is making an impact. What's different today is NJCU's presence is going global. It surely is a presence in Jersey City, Hudson County, and New Jersey. We also have faculty collaborators and student study abroad trips that are expanding NJCU's footprint in places such as China, Italy, and Brazil. Our students are award-winning competitors in the National Model United Nations and domestically in the American Mock Trial competitions. Dad would see that a college education continues to be an important investment. What's different today is that a college education is absolutely essential for future quality of life, career advancement, and closing inequality gaps. Dad believed that civic involvement was a necessary part of every person's work life, no matter what sector they were in. Leadership New Jersey is just one example of that commitment. And GCU's commitment to workforce development through civic engagement is seen in such initiatives as the Campus Compact headquartered here. Dad was also a mentor to diverse students and young professionals through scholarships and creating other networking opportunities for students, such as the Washington Center. In fact, NJCU's affiliation goes back 30 years. Today, NJCU recognizes the necessity of networking opportunities for students who do not have family or other connections that give them a leg up by promoting internships and other experiential opportunities. Finally, Dad was a believer in young people, including in his own children. This gave us the confidence in ourselves. Today, he would see the enduring faith the faculty and administration have in our students. Believing in them gives them the confidence to go, experiment, explore, and step out of their com comfort zone and make their mark. New Jersey is transforming lives in 2018, and he'd be a very grateful legacy honoree. On behalf of our family, thank you. Our next three awards focus on the present. Each of these accomplished honorees have harnessed their passion, talent, and drive to affect positive change that will benefit Jersey City for generations. These accomplished professionals are today's impact makers. To, pre to present the service award to the Honorable Mayor Stephen M. Fuller, please welcome Angelo Genovo Esquire with Genovo Burns. Give Marcus a round of applause. You're doing a great job. Huh? So I have the uh, privilege of uh, introducing a very special person in Mayor Stephen Fuller for the service award. The other day, I, I came across an article where Mayor Fuller was referred to as just another politician. And I thought about that. And I thought how untrue that was, and how undescriptive it was, and quite frankly, how disparaging it was. Because this is a man that is not just another politician. This is a man whose principles and values were born of grandparents who had suffered one of the greatest tragedies in civilization, and that was the Holocaust. His principles were forged in a household that guided him through his life of service. This is a man that chose not the wealth of Wall Street, but duty to our nation by serving in Iraq after the 9-11 tragedy. This is a man who had many opportunities to succeed and earn a lot of money, but he came to this city and devoted his life to the service of others. My parents taught me that in life there are givers and there are takers, and certainly Stephen Fuller is a giver. 
And that, my friends, is the ultimate definition of service. <laughs> Mayor Fuller has led the city through significant times as it's changed demographically, as its diversity has become its hallmark. And he's soon to preside to the chagrin of my good friend, Mayor Baraka, over New Jersey's largest city. So I think this New Jersey City University, its foundation, picked the right one in its inaugural award for service. So I welcome and congratulate Mayor Stephen Fuller. Let me say uh, thank you to Angelo. I didn't really expect Angelo to make the introduction, being that uh, he's an honoree as well. And uh, I will say that it is a, a pri privilege to be on the same stage, honored with somebody like yourself, who has devoted so much time and energy to making the state a better place. So thank you for those kind words. Um, so, you know, I I've been blessed over the last five years to have the privilege of uh, being mayor of this tremendously diverse and changing and dynamic city. And uh, while I accept this award, uh, it's really on behalf of all the great people that I've had the chance to work with over the couple of years. You know, one, one thing I've learned in this job is that I can't do it myself, and even City Hall and the team that we have can't do it by ourselves. We really need great partners in the community. And I was fortunate when I got elected that my tenure coincided with a lot of other people who started significant time at some of the major institutions here in Jersey City as well. Whether it's the medical center, whether it's Sue at NJCU, whether it's our superintendent of school, Dr. Riles. And that gave an opportunity with fresh energy and vision to really move the city in a direction it hasn't been before. So while I'm thankful for this, and I appreciate you recognizing me, I, I want to say thank you to all those partners that we've had a chance to work with over the last couple of years. And I can tell you that the future of Jersey City is very bright because of all the people we have in this room. So thank you again, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Innovation is defined as the process of implementing new ideas to create value for an organization. Our next award is the Innovation Award, and our honoree is none other than Angelo J. Genova, a highly valued and beloved leader in our business community. To present the Innovation Award to Angelo J. Genovo, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Congressman Frank Warini. Am I alive? <laughs> Everybody, I'm most pleased to present an award for my dear friend, Angel Genova, the Innovation Award. Angel is a man of many talents, determination, and the courage to do what is right. He is truly an innovator and a modern day renaissance man. He is bringing new ideas to our business and government world. Hard work and talent are the keynotes of his success. He is truly a man of innovation. He is the founder of a great law firm, a uh, distinguished law firm named Genova Burns. He has offices throughout the state of New Jersey, in Pennsylvania, New York, and in Washington, D.C. I might add that he's also a very talented musician and a great piano player and orchestra leader. Angelo, you have challenged the norm in many ways. We celebrate your successes and honor you tonight. May you please step forward so I can present to you the award. He is a great friend and a great man. Angelo Genoa. Thank you, Frank. That was, that was great. I appreciate that very much. You know, uh, Frank's quick is, you know, are you alive? It's, it's remarkable, uh, Frank. I mean, you look terrific, and uh, we're very, very fortunate to have you available to us and bring your great, great mind to the, uh, 
to the world. Thank you. You know, it struck me, it struck me that, uh, Susan, uh, you could have saved a lot of time and paper because I think Frank would have fit into every category of these awards tonight, whether it's legacy, service, innovation, and even art. Um, first of all, let me thank uh, Marcus for being our MC, and I'd like to thank uh, President Henderson for this opportunity this evening and the, and the foundation. Um, this morning, as uh, our grandchildren were scurrying around and my wife Donna was uh, attending to them and I was rushing out of the house and we were talking about arrangements for tonight, uh, as I was putting on my tie, I said, I said Donna, doesn't it strike you that you're, you know, you're married to me and in your wildest dreams, Donna, would you, would you ever think that the man you would marry would be the recipient of the Jersey City, New Jersey City University Innovation Award. In your wildest dreams, and Donna pauses and looks at Robbie and looks at Marissa and then looks at me and she says, honey, I hate to tell you, but you don't show up in my wildest dreams. <laughs> so so that, that starts with humility. That's, humility is a very important attribute. You know, they say that uh, necessity is the mother of invention, and invention uh, breeds innovation. I'm not so much in a profession that is innovative. In fact, lawyers, as Marcus will tell you, we tend to be behind the curve, and some of the more junior lawyers understand innovation and technology a lot better than dinosaurs like me. But I will tell you this, I, I will tell you that having the opportunity to work with innovative people, to work with the team at New Jersey City University, and I know my colleague, Gene Paolino, who's here this evening, has worked closely with Al Ramey and, and the team at the University and Susan. Working with innovative people, trying to introduce new ideas to accomplish their objectives is one of the most exciting things. And this city is, is a city that is full of those opportunities, whether it's its new technologies or the like. So I'm, I'm very proud to have been acknowledged for the small contribution that I've made uh, in that space. Uh, I do, uh, like Mayor Fulop, uh, uh, believe that you know we, we may get a plaque or we may get an award, but we don't get to stand up here without the support of the people that we work with. And in my case, it's a wonderful group of partners uh, at our law firm uh, and our Jersey City office led by uh, Gene Paolino and Jen Borick and all of my colleagues at Genova Burns. So I want to thank them and accept this award on their behalf. Uh, I also uh, very much want to thank my uh, children, uh, one of whom is here this evening, uh, my son Trevor with his girlfriend Laura. I'm allowed to call her his girlfriend this evening. And, uh, and he gave me permission to do that. That's a big thing. You know, that's a big and I, of course, I want to I thank my wife Donna, who's been a great uh, support to me. And finally, I want to thank all the honorees. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Stefania and, uh, um, and uh, for all the great things you've done and you come from a wonderful family. Mayor Phillip, I'd like to thank you. And I knew your dad, Tom, uh, back in the day in Montclair when uh, Louise and I were, you know, they, I guess they called them progressives today, right, Louise? Is that what we were? We were, we were, we were liberal Democrats at the back in the day. But with all of that said, thank you again to the young people in this room and starting with humility, and let me end with that. Two words I have for you, remain humble, but remain hungry, and you'll succeed in your careers and embrace innovation when you do that. Thank you. During the reception, I hope you were able to view the exquisite art pieces on display, which are now all along the backside of the ballroom. Each of these pieces are available for purchase this evening as part of our fundraising auction. All of the art brought in this evening is courtesy of our next award recipient, Stefania Panapento, founder of Panapento Galleries. We are proud to honor Stefania with the Arts Award, and I invite Dr. Sue Henderson to please return to the stage and present this award. So I was thrilled to be asked to do this because um, I got to know Stefania a few years ago, but my fondest memories of her was last fall, I guess it was, when we were convening on Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, I was there for another purpose, and she was actually showing some of her artwork down there, and we got a chance to share some really important time together. 
but it's been my absolute privilege to get to know Stefania. I'll tell you a little bit about her. She is an artist, a gallery owner, an art advisor, and she maintains her studio in Jersey City. Her vision and love for the arts have been driving forces in the building of a vibrant community of artists located in the heart of the powerhouse arts district of Jersey City. She's a highly valued member of the University Arts Advisory Board, which aims to create a cultural vision plan designed to identify key steps towards furthering the vitality of the arts in Jersey City. That's performing arts, visual arts, and media arts. In 2011, she, she founded Panapinto Galleries. It's a unique collective space that hosts art ex exhibitions, film screenings, artist salons, and photo shoots. She expanded her vision to establish the Panapinto Fine Art to further bridge the gap between artists, building owners, and business owners, whom she assists in curating permanent art collections that enhance the unique elements of each location. It's a thrill to me, because you go to business and you see art on the way. Thank you. She's also launched Art as Inspiration. She's working with local artists from Jersey City, New York City, and the surrounding areas. She and her team create and source custom-designed contemporary artwork. She holds a Master's of Fine Arts from New York Academy of Arts, Fine Institution, and a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science from Rutgers University. She specializes in oil paint, mixed media, sculpture, and her works have been featured in New York Observer and CBS News and WCBS TV. Congratulations to Fine. Thank you so much, Sue, for this award. It really means a lot to me. I'm both honored and humbled by this recognition and thankful for the ability to work with such an incredible community of artists and art lovers in Jersey City and the region. Without the support of NJCU, the Jersey City Arts Council, the Office of Cultural Affairs, and women such as Christine Goodman, Robinson Holloway, and Brooke Hansen, along with developers such as Iron State Development, Hearts Mountain Industries, Cabin Group, Spear Street Capital, and of course, Panapinto Properties, who have helped me and the city work towards creating and promoting a vital arts community in Jersey City, we would not have been able to accomplish our goals. This award encapsulates what the community has done together to make that happen. Although this is a leadership award, I see myself more as a conduit or the organizer of a larger effort to encourage artists to create, show, and sell their works, and to encourage business owners to purchase, showcase, and help the arts community. In addition, I want to applaud NJCU for its commitment to the cultural soul of Jersey City, where there's a great need for a central arts organization. The Jersey City Cultural Map Program, which is currently underway and led by NJCU, will be one of the many advancements to centralize and make a more accessible art community in Jersey City. Consider for a moment what art does for a community. Art improves our sense of belonging or attachment to the community and increases cult cultural capital. Art increases local tourism, retail traffic, adding economically to our community and to our local businesses. Art improves community norms such as diversity, tolerance, and free expression. Art causes people to come together who might not otherwise come in contact with each other. Art causes a greater likelihood of revitalization of an area. For example, the Jersey City Mural Program, headed by Mayor Fulton's administration, is an excellent example of this great success. And finally, art builds social capital by getting people involved, by connecting organizations to each other, and by giving participants experience in organizing and working with local governments and nonprofits. Please be sure to support NJ Foundation this evening by, per, by participating in our silent auction. All the proceeds from the silent auction go directly to the artists and to the NJCU Foundation. Your support for NJC, NJCU translates to your support for continued artistic and cultural endeavors in Jersey City. Thank you again for this award, and more importantly, for the opportunity to continue to work with the Jersey City artist community.
before you leave the stage, obviously, I would like to say congratulations to you. Um, great acceptance speech. Um, could you uh, give us any more information about the auction and the pieces that are up there? All of the artwork is uh, from local Jersey City, Hoboken, and regional artists. Um, the artwork is, uh, it was part of the original uh, exhibition shown at 70 Hutchin, sponsored by Spruce Street Capital. And these 18 pieces were selected by uh, the Arts Committee and um, will be on display until the auction ends um, at 8.30 today. So if you can please go up, um, sign, up on the, sign up on the bid sheets and um, take home a piece of art today. It would really mean a lot to the artists and also would support the NJC Foundation. We'd like to introduce, introduce our musicians. We have Daryl Kubian and Joanna Farrell on violins. Izzy Wayman on viola. And Nayang Young back on the cello. They will be performing Joseph, Joseph Hayden's String Quartet Number 13, the first and fourth movements. Thank you. 
This evening's event is the result of many months of collaboration between the staff and faculty at the university, the trustees and board of directors of the foundation, friends and retirees of the foundation, and of course, our event sponsors. Thank you. Tonight's sponsors provided generous support to ensure the success of tonight's event. We wish to thank the following for participating this year. Our dinner host and Statue of Liberty sponsor is the Frank J. Guarini Foundation. Our cocktail hour hosts and Ellis Island sponsors, AJ, AJD Construction, Genova Burns, and JP Morgan Chase. Our Liberty State Park sponsors are Fidelity Investments, Panapinto Properties, Silverman, and Wyndham Worldwide. That's the Silverman team, they're rowdy. Let's give one more round of applause to our great sponsors. Thank you. The past, the present, as we continue our remarkable evening of rec recognition, it's fitting for us to shift our focus toward the future. I've mentioned how important it is to have access to good education and that New Jersey City University is providing just that for our future leaders. Being a critical thinker is tantamount to becoming successful in a career and the university is doing a stellar job preparing young minds for bold futures. I'm so very proud to have Dr. Sue Henderson return to the stage once again to talk about a topic she knows well, the future. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying uh, your dessert and the piece I'm about to talk with you about is critically important to me. Uh, each and every one of you has been a partner to make the city stronger, and I appreciate that. Steve had to leave because he's getting ready to go to the, the meeting of mayors uh, up in Boston, uh, so I was glad he's representing us. And I want to reiterate uh, our host in saying I want to thank our partners. Without you, without your support, we would not be able to be what we are today, nor would we be able to do what we do today. So I want to thank you whether it's the Medical Center, Provident, RWJ, Luana, Silverman, Fidelity, Panapinto, Wyndham, Genova Burns, J.P. Morgan, AUD, Frank, thank you so much, all of you. I really want to thank you so much for your work. This last bit is important to me because this person came to me after being at NJCU for a year and said, I love this institution, it is changing my life. I am an out-of-state student paying twice the amount of your students with no aid. I don't get the tag, and I love this place, but I can't stay. I said, why not? He said, it's costing me too much. So, his name is Colin Officer, and I want to listen. Have you listened to see the things that he has done? By the way, we fixed that problem because he ended up working in my office, which is great because he's doing wonderful things there. So Colin Officer is the very essence of an evolving leader from NJCU. By the way, in 10 years, I'm going to be going to him after a gift. <laughs> His hard work and persistence have amply prepared him to make a very distinctive mark on the world. He's a May 2018 graduate. He earned a bachelor's degree in psychology and established a distinguished record of accomplishments during his four years at the university. Here are just a few of them. He was a presidential scholar which means his GPA was really high. He was the president of the Student Government Association, which meant the students loved him. 
He was a recipient of the 2017 Newman Civic Fellowship, which, by the way, they only give 40 in the country. One of 40. An award geared for community-committed college students. By the way, my student this year that won it, we get one a year, is actually a DACA student, which means he's undocumented. Um, Colin served as a student trustee on the NJCU Board of Trustees as a student senator at large in the University Senate. He was a peer mentor in the Student Outreach uh, Retention Office, which has done a lot to improve our retention of students. He was a treasurer of the Greek Senate and a uh, Psi Sigma Pi, I didn't say that right, uh, volunteer for the Mentor Scholar Program of Black Alumni, Administrators, Faculty, Staff, and Student, BAFSO. He also proved himself to be a dynamic and dependable worker as a student assistant in my office. I am delighted to bring Colin up here and know that he is returning this fall to pursue his master's degree in psychology. Colin? Good evening, everyone. As the president said before, my name is Colin Officer, and I'm a recent graduate of NJCU. Before I continue, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to Dr. Henderson, for as she said, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been able to continue my college education at NJCU. So again, thank you. So beginning in college, I did not actually start at NJCU. I started at another college. But I did not, I truly believe that I didn't belong in college. That I wasn't ready and that it wasn't for me. And as a result, I ended up losing my scholarship and had to leave that university my first year. Now thankfully, I was able to make it into NJCU after learning my lesson. And it was there that I was just overwhelmed by how much everyone at that university seemed to care. Whether it be the professors who stayed after class or extended their office hours frequently, or even the administrators like Dr. Henderson, who made sure that my family and I well, they made sure that I could continue going to college. The faculty and staff of NJCU created an environment where I could make mistakes and fail, but still feel like I was on the right path. They taught me how to shoulder more responsibility and then use that in service of my peers and the community outside of the college. It's because of them that I understand that no matter how much one person works hard or how much passion they have. Everybody needs somebody to believe in them, help them, and mentor them in order to succeed. It's, and this lesson is not unique to me because every student at NJCU has this engraved in their minds thanks to the faculty and staff. And it's with this lesson that it drove me to take on the numerous offices such as student representative for board trustees or the student government president, so that I could have an impact in the lives of my peers and the community. Now, I know it sounds like I did a lot during my three years, but I promise you that I am not unique. There are numerous other students at NJCU that are the same, if not a greater caliber than me. Each one of them could have easily held all the offices and has an amazing devotion towards service. And I can promise you that we all have grand visions for our communities, but we lack something that you all have in abundance, experience. So I'm asking you today, please share with us your goals and how they've evolved. The times you succeeded when people did not believe in your capabilities, and especially the times where you did not live up to your own expectations and kept persisting. You see, we need the foresight that you've gained from working alongside all the leaders that you've succeeded, and we need the intuition you've developed from overseeing the numerous projects and countless programs that you've put together. In order for us to make the next 
big innovative contribution to our fellow man, we need you guys to share all of your experiences, all of your choices, and what made you take them. And if you do, I promise that my peers and I will make you proud and the community even prouder. Thank you. I look forward to listening to all of your magnificent stories, and I can't wait to assist you in leaving a legacy that will affect this community. Thank you. To wind down our evening, we have one final performance from the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, and you are going to love, love, love this one, which is a favorite song for many of us here tonight. Please welcome Israel Hernandez, the student tenor from the university, and please welcome Jenna Ravenda back to the stage as they delight us with the song tonight from West Side Story. Thank you. 
Now, I have a little bit of a confession to make. Earlier, I had the honor to talk to uh, Congressman Guarini, and he says, Marquise, you're doing a great job up there. You're doing a wonderful job. And then I got up here and forgot to announce one of our sponsors. I let it go to my head a little bit. But no, seriously, um, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, recognize our Port Jersey sponsors. Uh, Teresa and Brendan Cameron, the Jersey City Medical Center, Luana, Provident Bank, and the Stanton family. Please give them a round of applause for being a great sponsor for our event tonight. You all know we cannot do these types of events without great sponsors, and we definitely have them tonight. I echo Dr. Henderson's words. Now, it's such a great performance, it's time to put a wrap on the 2018 Jersey City Leadership Awards. I hope you enjoyed this evening's experience and had as much fun as I did. We want to thank you all for being here. Thank all the sponsors, all the guests, all the honorees for the tremendous work. Everyone, travel safely, and we'll see you all back here next year. Thank you. Advice to future leaders, listen, listen carefully to those around you. Don't be afraid to fail. Be humble, stay hungry. Well, I have something that I prepared for tonight. And one of the qualities of a leader is also the ability to take a thoughtful risks, to try it out. And if it doesn't work out, learn a lesson and move on. A leader must be able to work with people and to guide a group to reach their goals. And throughout my, throughout my life and my career, um, I, found, I found that very important to never give up. There's always a, a me, there's always a way to the end. And as long as you believe and have a passion inside of you, you can always um, find your success in whatever you decide that you're, you're gonna, gonna, gonna do with your life. <laughs> I will tell you that the advice my dad would give future leaders is advice he gave to me many, many years ago, and that is to know yourself. Um, the, the second piece of advice he would offer is that there are leaders and there are followers and you have to decide what you want to be. Okay, so what advice would I give future leaders? I think that future leaders need to learn to listen, uh, to look for talent among all the people that they work with, and to have a passion for what they do because that will help them be successful and it will help their organizations be successful. So, hi, my name is Joe Scott. I'm the President and CEO of Jersey City Medical Center and the Executive Vice President for Healthcare Transformation. So, let me tell you, to be a leader means to volunteer for every single opportunity you get. It's, uh, it's a real way for people to recognize the value you can bring to an organization. So, volunteer whenever you can. That's my best recommendation.